Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to take a look at different practicals involved with plant hormones. So first of all we look at auxin. So in A this is where the tips have been removed and the tips of the shoot is where auxin is made so therefore we don't get any growth of the shoot upwards. If this was a more of a developed seedling I might get more lateral growth of the plant where I get more side shoots because by removing the tip and removing the auxin, I'm also removing apical dominance, which is where the shoot is growing upwards rather than developing shoots off to the side. Uh, B, here the shoot tips are covered up. So although auxin is made here, we've still got the tip there. Um, it's Here the auxin moves to all parts of the stem, causing all parts of it to grow. Whereas C, it's lit from one side, and the auxin is being made here because I've not taken off the shoot tip. And the auxin on the side of the plant where it is lit is broken down. So therefore the shaded side of that shoot grows more, forcing that shoot tip to grow towards the light. There are some other ones to do with auxin. Auxin seems, seems to be the most popular plant hormone when discussed in the exam. So as you can see in this first one, it's very similar to the one we were just discussing then. Um, in the second one here, again, the tip's been removed, so therefore the auxin has been removed, which is where it's it's made from in the shoot tip. If I don't have any auxin being made, I'm not going to get any growth towards that light source. The third shoot here has been covered up with an opaque cap, so therefore the light can't get access to the shoot tip. So therefore, the auxin is not broken down on the lit side. So the shoot here would just grow up in one direction. In the fourth experiment, the tip is covered by a transparent cap. So here the light can get through and it can break down the auxin, which gathers here in the shoot tip. So it can break down, the light can break down the auxin, which is on the lit side of the shoot. And therefore, the plant will grow in towards the light. And in this fifth one here, the base is covered by an opaque shield. So this is to make sure that it is at, the light is actually impacting upon the tip and not the base. Uh, finally, in these last two over here, we have a tip separated by an agar block, which allows the auxin to spread down the plant and then diffuse down the, down the shoot, so therefore it will bend towards the light. Whereas in the last one here, the mica, what this does is it prevents the diffusion of auxin down the shoot tip, so therefore it, auxin has no impact uh, further down the shoot, causing it to bend, so it doesn't bend. Uh, we have experiment on jubilarins. Uh, so as you can see here, the higher the concentration of jubilarins, um, the more plant growth I get there, the more stem growth. We also see um, similar in shoots as well. So this one here would have the highest concentration of jubilarins given to it, again, because it pr produces a larger stem. Uh, so when you're designing an experiment, it's really important here that we talk about these couple of things. First of all, we need to talk about what variable we are changing in our experiment, but you need to say how you're doing that. So if you're changing the concentration of something, does it involve a serial dilution? If you're changing the volume, give an example of the volumes that you're going to use here. If you're changing the pH, give an example of the pHs you're going to use. So the more marks you get for these questions, the more detail needs to go in. So I have seen a couple of six markers where you need to design an experiment. So it's really important you include as much detail as you can. Uh, the S, keeping what variables are you keeping the same? So again, really important you tell me how are you actually keeping those variables the same? So for example, you're keeping temperature the same, that's great, but how? Oh, well, I'm going to keep all of my products within the same room. And what am I actually measuring and how? Really important here you say how you're measuring it. So for example, you can't just say I'm going to measure, measure transpiration, for example. Well, you can't measure transpiration, so how are you actually going to do that? Oh, well, I'm going to me measure the how far the bubble moves within a potometer, for example. We've always got to mention we do repeats, but often just mentioning the word repeats isn't enough. You need to say, I'm going to do repeats of the experiment to identify anomalous results, calculate me and perform statistics such as standard deviation. Really important. I get as much information in there as possible. So that's about it really with your experiments. I've gone through the most popular ones there. Just make sure you remember CSMR for your different experiments that you might be asked to create in your exam. Guys, good luck with your exams and all the best with those.